Let's take a look at what's really going on. Globally in 2018, markets have shown their true weakness. As soon as central banks made it known that QE was not here to stay, the markets just needed some sort of trigger event. Once that trigger hit, the market has yet to recover since. True weakness and fragility has been revealed. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we're going to look all around the world at stocks. We're going to address this, not from the Dow Jones and the S&P, and try to pull in a whole world view and what's going on. The world is bigger than just a couple markets. I'm going to look at several today to give you an idea of what's going on. I'll touch on some points along the way. I didn't put them in any particular order, but just at the end there's something that i really want to address hope that my true subscribers will stay here until then let's begin by taking a look at the msci world stocks you can see what had happened we had this once again and i know that some of you have heard me say this many times we have this point in time at the end of January where stocks hit that trigger point, and that was the VIX index in this case, though, of course, the VIX, I would suggest, is something very, very small, but the market only needs a trigger. It only needs a spark, and we saw what happened. Now, world stocks declined tremendously in a short period of time. Since then, we have seen the market trading up and down and up and down, but ultimately not getting back to its previous high. They haven't been able to grow past that point. Yes, there are some markets, there are some stocks, which I'll cover today, that have gone beyond that. But in general, world stocks are still down. We are six months in at this point from that high point experienced in January and have not seen a high. In fact, they're looking like they're going to weaken throughout the second half of 2018. That's what the market is telling us at this time. And we have all of the media, all of those in the finance industry pushing, 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 saying this bull market can be extended several years from today in 2018. And of course, when they come out and say those things, I get really cautious. I get really concerned because they only spread that propaganda in the tough times. They don't need to do that when times are just fine. So what's happening? Well, let's take a look. We're looking here at the Shanghai Composite and you can see that this market has severely moved down throughout this time period down. The last time I saw it was 22% from its peak. China is officially in a bear market in stocks. This uh, Using this as an indicator, that's not a good sign for them because it looks like there's simply going to be more and more tensions. They want to put $300 billion worth of tax or tariffs on this, and I don't know how that's going to escalate. I don't know what's going to happen with this whole summit that's going to be taking place. Is that going to be a major change? change is it going to be a factor at all i'm going to be watching it very very closely though so keep an eye out on that and i know it doesn't necessarily by the way have to do with china but they are directly directly involved i assure you now this one uh, here is Singapore. Looking at Singapore, it has come up, it has come down, it's been very erratic, but just in the last, you know, basically since May, the market has come down significantly throughout this period. And by the way, if you look at this, it's, it's a few hundred points basically down from its peak. Looking at another stock market, just wanted to show you that there is weakness, okay? Some markets are down you know, extremely bad. Others are, are not so much, but I have a few more to show you. This happens to be Japan in this case, and you can see that it has come down despite the fact that the government owns, imagine this, the government is the top 10 shareholder in basically half of the companies in this market, and yet still it's declining. What does that tell you? See that in this case here, we can say that it has come down, if I put my mouse over, from t just over 24,000 today sitting at you know, under 22,000. So it's come down a, a few thousand points here. But remember, they've been engaging in all of this quantitative easing measures, and still they've been unable to boost it up. Imagine all of this selling here. That wasn't the government. The government didn't do any of that. But I assure you, they had something to do with this. 
Okay, Japan is uh, owning three quarters of the three quarters of the ETFs. Practically half of the stocks out there, they're owning half of the bonds out there. I mean, it's ridiculous, and people look to it as being, you know, a model of success. It's ridiculous. This happens to be Argentina, which you can see has come down as well, going from a high of let's say about thirty-five thousand down today to about twenty-five thousand. So we have a very big, big change there. All the while, though, they've been reducing the value of their currency. They've been, you know, whether intentional or not, they've been destroying it, or they've been witnessing it being destroyed. And here we have it. That should be the case, though, that we would see their stock market rising because of the devaluation of the currency, but it's not happening the way that they want it to. This here is Brazil. Now, Brazil has seen some decline in their market as well, peaking out around 87,000 and now to 74,000 or so. So we can see the drop there in Brazil. I'm seeing a devaluation of their currency as well throughout 2018. Looking at South Africa, they have declined also. I'm seeing a trend here, by the way, if you haven't witnessed this so far. Taking a look at Italy, they have declined. It's just becoming a broken record at this point. We saw this, if I show you. So we saw along with everybody else, their markets were declining. And then they had this whole business about well, we're going to be okay because a new government's going to form and everything's going to be totally fine. And then, oops, oh no, actually, everything's not fine. All right, looking at Germany, they have seen the the effects of all of these dominoes falling. Germany being, you know, that one strong country in Europe that the whole market is waiting for and needs to basically support it. And here we are, we're watching them take the fall also. Spain, no difference with the other markets as well. Now, one issue that I wanted to note was simply this. When you look at the NASDAQ 100, we can see, depending on what we want to look at, we can address this from where it was in 2017 up until today. We can look at where it was in April. But I want to note something. When that moment hit in January, up until today, it's the same level. Even the NASDAQ 100, which is seen as the market everybody should be investing in because of the whole FANG plus stocks. Now, this is an important set of stocks, which of course accounts for practically 100% of the gains that we have seen here in the stock market. And that's not exaggerating. That is a literal fact. And I would suggest to everybody to look at what the NASDAQ 100 is. The same level. The same level that it was at that moment in time. If we break it down further and we look at a particular stocks, in this case here, you can see Amazon. Amazon stock has taken off. There's no doubt, nobody would deny that, that this has been an excellent performer. I can keep going back years and years and years and I could see how well it has done. We can see one direction practically and that is up. So we did see the stock take a dip, no doubt, but it recovered very rapidly. People saw that moment as an opportunity to buy the dip, so they did. And they've clearly come out on top as a result. But I just have a little problem. When you look at the FANG stocks, what do we really have? We have companies that have become, no doubt, more important over the years. However, we see a concentration of wealth. We see a concentration of all of the control. And we see more and more people piling in to a select number of stocks. All money is floating in to just a handful from all of these different companies that are out there. Big names are losing out on the cash and it's floating in to FANG stocks. Now, if you're invested in Amazon, you probably feel pretty good about it. However, 
This is never a good sign historically. When we see this, I always think of it like a roadway that you're driving down and it's narrowing and narrowing. It's becoming, you know, going from, let's say, four lanes or three lanes down to two lanes and suddenly it becomes one lane. And that's really where we are at. We are going down a one lane street and there's not enough room there. And eventually we are met with an incident and then everybody is screwed up along the way. Last but not least, want to address this. You're looking at the best performing stock market I'm aware of. No, not the NASDAQ 100. No, not the FANG Plus Index. What we are looking at is Venezuela stock market. And you can see the performance here is incredible. I know a lot of people who are investing in the FANGs. A lot of people. And you've been missing out. You've been missing out on the real gains. You want gains? Don't go to the FANG Plus stocks. Go to Venezuela. That's right. This here, what you're seeing, this massive curve, is just 2018's gains. 2018's gains are far, far far better than anything that you can get in the FANG Plus. Anything. Look, if I try to take a guess as to where this was, it's actually below, if I'm looking at this correctly, this is 4,000. So it's below 4,000 at the beginning of 2018, their, mar their stock market. And now today, it is up to, if I have to move this thing, it is actually up to 100,000. 100,000. And it was at less than 4,000 at the beginning of 2018. In six months, it went from 4,000 to 100,000. Now, you would say, based on what I've been seeing, the, the beliefs, the false beliefs that people have, this has appreciated much, much better than any FANG stock than any stock I'm aware of in the US markets, Japan, Europe, South America, anywhere. So why not invest in this? What worries people that they don't want to invest in these companies? The stock have, has appreciated dramatically. That's what I wanna know. That's the lesson for today. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want the financial education that was not taught to you in schools. You need to read these two books. They've got it all. Top to bottom, A to Z. Take a look for yourself at Amazon. There's a link in the description below. And if you prefer the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.